We dropped off right in the middle of talking about graphing the first derivative of the function, which is kind of an interesting challenge. <laughs> okay, and so I'm showing you in a very precise method how to do this because it can be ugly. And um, so we've done a couple of examples quite quickly, and I'm going to do one more, which I hope will kind of help you grasp it. But again, this is section 3.2, continue. This is not a good pen for recording, so I'm getting ready to have to change pens. Actually, it's doing okay. Section 3.2, continue the derivative of a function. Okay, and when we come off from the last recording and from the last class period, I don't remember what this was titled, but what letter we're supposed to be on. But what we were doing was we were graphing the first derivative function. So in other words, we graph two things. We show the graph of just the regular old function f of x, and then we kind of build a table with the slopes of the tangent line to then come back and graph the first derivative. And it can be a little tricky. I mean, it's not just something you can just match it and have it done. You kind of have to work through this because guessing just doesn't get it whenever you're trying to do this. So I'm going to go to an example, which I believe is the third example um, from our notes in the first half of this section. And I'm actually pulling this directly from the textbook on page 113. I know that very few of you have the textbook, so I will show it and I will try to replicate it on this piece of graph paper. <clears throat> and here's what they ask. They show you all these, these eight graphs, and they say, Here's your original f of x. Okay, these are f of x's. And I want you to find the first derivative, the graph of the first derivative of this function and give the graph up here and pick which of these four is the first derivative of this function. And we did end on doing this parabola, and the first derivative of this was this linear graph right here. That's what we did. That's what we just finished. So now what I'm going to try to do is number 29, which is this one, and take you through the process to determine which of those graphs above are going to match it as its first derivative. So let's see if I can <clears throat> replicate this graph for you. Here is f of x to the best of my ability, which is not going to be very pretty. <clears throat> we can give it like a height of 2 here, and it's going to drop down to a low of 2, say here and a low of 2, say, here, and it's a curve. It looks like the sine wave or the cosine wave, something like that. And then it's going to come back up here and here and peek out again. Okay, this is the original function f of x. We're going to take the first derivative, we're going to find the first derivative values, and the first derivative values are the slope of the tangent line along that curve. Come up with those numbers and then graph that as our trying to find our match graph to the first derivative. Okay, so let's take a look, and we're going to kind of create a table, same x values, and then your first derivative is your slope of your tangent line. Okay, your slope of your tangent line. So here we go. Let's look over here at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. When x is negative 4, the slope of the tangent line would be the slope of this dotted line that I just graphed or just put on there, which is a horizontal line, which gives you a slope of 0. So the first derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line at the x value of negative 4, is 0. Now let's look over here at, say, that probably should be a negative 3. I'm going to claim this a negative 3. So I'm going to look kind of at an idea. I wonder what the slope is right here. Well, it is very vertical, and it is a negative slope. So I don't know. Let's just say a slope of negative 5 or something. Probably a lot bigger than that. We'll just guess that. Then let's look right here, say, at negative 2, which would be this point. And this would have a horizontal slope, again, of 0. Then let's look here at what would be approximately negative 1 which should be a positive slope, and let's call it a positive slope of 5. And I'm just guessing, when I'm saying 5, I'm just guessing. You could say 12, but 1 should be 12 and 1 should be negative 12 because they're really perfectly reflected as this curve is moving um, in this 
uh, leftward direction. Okay, then we're going to get up here where x is 0, and as, again, we have a horizontal line, so it's a slope of 0. Then if we look here at 1, okay, because of this being a symmetrical curve, this is going to be the slope, let's guess, the slope of negative 5. Then here at an x value of 2, we have a slope of 0. An x value of 3, the slope of the tangent line looks like it would be a positive 5. Then at 4, again, we have a slope of 0. So the slope of the tangent line is the y value on the first derivative function. So here's f of x. Here's going to be our table for graphing the first derivative. So now let's graph the first derivative function. Okay. When x is negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, y is 0. When x is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, y is negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When x is negative 2, y is 0. When x is negative 1, y is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When x is 0, y is 0. <clears throat> so that's what we've done so far. So honestly, it looks so far, it's kind of like something like um, this. And this is the first derivative. That is the first, get that little prime on that f. I mean, make certain you get that prime. Okay, then when x is 1, it's a negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When x is 2, it's 0. When x is 3, it's 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when x is 4, it's 0 again. So it looks something like that. First derivative. Be certain you're getting that prime on that f. Okay? This is the function itself. This is the first derivative of the function. So we see another wave, and if you go and look at the actual question in the textbook, the wave would be, the match wave would be, well, I was going to try to show both of them on here. The first derivative would be compared to this one. Okay, so you're getting that same rolling wave. Okay, we're showing it here. So our match would be part D. So again, it, it's not something that's very easy to just guess at. It, I mean, to get it consistently right, you really need to pull a table and do something like we did here to create this first derivative, the graph of the first derivative, and try to be consistently correct. Okay, again, it's not necessarily easy. It takes a minute to get through this and to do it correctly. Okay, when we did it on the last recording, we didn't create a table. I just wrote negative 4 slope is, and I probably should have created a table. So this time I was a little more precise in giving you a table. Okay, my quiet students. <laughs> All right, so now <clears throat> the next topic at hand, and I, is this part D, do y'all know? Would I be correct in calling it part D? Y'all have your notes. No comments out there. We'll call it D then. Okay, now the question is, or the focus is going to be, when does the when does the first derivative not exist? Okay, when does the first derivative not exist? And this is where I copied a page out of the book and gave it to you. And it's like all these weird diagrams you see, okay? This is on page 111 of your book. And this is what I copied and gave to you to try to help understand what in the world they're trying to tell us here, which is they're trying to tell us where the first derivative does not exist. So if you want to pull your hand out and scribble all over it, you can. And that's completely up to you. And... Um, I'll get this scanned and also post it online so you can print it again if you want to. When does the first derivative not exist? And pretty much this, is, this does not exist. The first derivative was written on the page prior. So the differentiability is the smoothest condition of the graph and when it's going to fail. Well, if you look at this one, this graph, here, the way the function actually looks, because it's not in color with this copy, is it kind of comes up to this point and then it arches back out. 
Okay? So it's considered to have what they call a corner in it. A corner in it. So if you have a corner in it, the derivative is not going to exist at that point. The first derivative will be undefined at the point P. Now remember the first derivative is giving you the slope of the tangent line. That's why they've got all these, these other lines here. Is because if you take a look at all those tangent lines they've graphed, okay, you know, you have this one, which is a nice slope, and this one's a nice slope, and this is a nice slope, and this is a nice slope, and, th and then all of a sudden it changes dramatically to this angle. So it changes from a slope here of like maybe positive 10 instantaneously to a slope of like negative 3 or negative a half or something. So it says that when your slope changes dramatically, it just, instant, it just changes, it's not smooth from one point to the next, then that causes the first derivative to not be defined. So talking here about a smoothness condition means that these tangent lines should smooth, smoothly move from one value to the next and not make a dramatic change. So when you have what they call like a corner point in the graph of your original function, your first derivative will not exist at that point. Yes? <laughs> I'm having a hard time describing it. But really what they're trying to define here. Straight across in between those, in between that little X looking thing that they make. You see how they cross all the derivatives? Oh, right here? Yes, you're talking about this X? Yeah, and if you just draw any line that goes like halfway through that. Like here? Horizontally, other way. Right here? Yeah, you can draw that line and that would be a tangent to it, right? No, because that's not really, that's where it's not being smooth. I mean, it's going from this dramatic version of a positive slope to a negative slope, and there's no, it's not transitioning smoothly. It's like there's too many possible tangent lines to have one single tangent on that. Right? I don't know that that's exactly correct. <laughs> but the, the, the real issue, I don't think you're on track. What really is, is you're looking for a smooth transition from the fur, the, from, for the consecutive tangent lines. They've got to be smooth. You can't transition from a nice, you can't transition from a, you know, looking like a negative slope to instantly a positive slope. It has to be a smooth transition. Okay, so that smoothness fact, that smoothness factor is kind of what we're going into here. So when you see this, recognize the first derivative does not exist at P. The first derivative is fine here and here, but at P, it does not exist at that one point. Here's another example. They call it a cusp, where your graph of your function goes up and kind of hits a point and then it comes back down. Okay. And here, your first derivative line is not going to be, it's going to be undefined at P because, it kind of, because your first, your tangent line up here is perfectly vertical. And when your line is vertical, the slope of the vertical line is undefined. So it would be undefined at P because, again, your vertical line would have an undefined slope. Your tangent line would have an undefined slope, and it kind of becomes a vertical amount. That same thing is projected here in this third example where you have these tangent lines that are moving and moving, and all of a sudden it becomes a vertical. The slope of a vertical line is undefined, so your slope of your tangent line is undefined at P, so your first derivative is undefined at the point P. Now, it's defined everywhere else along the line, but at P, it is undefined. The first derivative is undefined. Here's another example where it is not defined, where you have a, what we call a break or a jump in the graph. Here they call it a discontinuity, which is kind of the same thing, where you know, you're finding the slope of your tangent line, and it gets kind of lost right here, where it's trying to create a tangent line between the solid point and maybe the open circle, and that's just not working. So if you have a dis well, if you have a break in the graph, which is also a discontinuity in the graph, then your first derivative will not exist at this location. And then last but not least, it shows another similar example where you have a hole in the graph and then a filled circle or a filled point up higher. So as you're trying to compute the derivative or the slope, 
it doesn't know what to do with this point up here. And so it, it kind of it makes for confusion, more or less. And again, you're not going to have your first derivative exist at that point P. So remember, this is your first derivative, just the value of the first derivative. Okay. Remember, the limit will still exist in an open circle. The limit of the function does, but the limit of the difference quotient, which is the limit of the slopes, which is the first derivative, does not exist at that point. So be really careful. When you talk about a limit of the function, the limit of the function two-sided is okay at a hole in the graph, but the first derivative is not. Okay, so you have to kind of keep those separate in your mind. Difference in the limit versus the value of the first derivative. Okay, you're talking about the limit of a function versus the limit of the slope of a function. So be careful that you don't confuse those two concepts. Um, then there's a theorem that, so all of this was pretty much the handout which we're looking at and we're discussing. Then we come across this theorem which is really um, quite important. It's a theorem which is on page 111. And it says, differentiality implies continuity. That sounds pretty impressive. <laughs> Differentiality implies continuity. If f has a derivative at some x value, the first derivative exists, then f is continuous at that point. Okay, so if the function has a derivative, it is continuous at that point. So pretty much if the function has a first derivative, meaning f prime of x exists at a specific x value, okay? If the function has a first derivative, you can calculate the first derivative. It's not in one of these undefined locations. If the function has a first derivative at an x value, then the function is continuous at that x value. Okay, that's what that theorem is saying in a little less formal terms to try to get an understanding of what it's saying. So if the function has a first derivative or the first derivative exists at a very specific x value, then the function is continuous at that x value. So if you look at that handout, you know, over here the first derivative exists and yes, it's continuous. Here the first derivative exists and the function is continuous. Here. The first derivative does not exist, so the theorem does not apply. Okay, the first derivative does not exist, so it does not apply. Here, the first derivative exists, it is continuous. Okay, now another interesting one would be, um, if the first derivative exists, the function is continuous. So here's what's interesting. This does not mean, it does not mean if first derivative exists, no, it does not mean if, does not mean if the function is continuous, the function exists, the first derivative exists. Okay. So the converse of the theorem, this is the theorem, the converse of the theorem is not true, okay? If it's continuous, the first derivative might not exist. So maybe I should say if continuous is not necessarily true, is not always true, not always true, that the first derivative exists. If the function is continuous, it is not always true that the first derivative will exist. That's what we're trying, that's what I'm trying to tell you. The function can be continuous and still the first derivative not exist. The converse of the theorem is not true. And that's what you see in that example which I was trying to show you. And this function, this example here, 
This is a continuous function. You don't have to lift your pencil to sketch this thing. It's got a corner in it. Who cares? It's continuous. So it is continuous. However, the first derivative does not exist at point P. Okay. So you can say if the first derivative exists, the function is continuous. But you cannot say if it's continuous, the first derivative exists. It's a one-way theorem. It is not, you can't reverse it. If you've ever heard of the if and only if statement, which means that you can reverse the theorem, the converse is true. It's not true in this case. So be very careful that you don't try to say if it's continuous, the first derivative exists, because that is not always true. So be very careful you don't reverse it. So I hope I didn't just confuse the fire out of you guys. <laughs> okay. But just be really careful that you don't assume continuity defines the first derivative because that is not a true assumption. Be extremely careful with it. All right. Oh, I think I hope, hope I didn't confuse the fire out of you guys. <laughs> let's move on and let's take a look at section 3.3 because I think in 3.3, um, you will be fine. Actually, no, let me back up a minute. I think I do want to say one more thing. One more thing. I'm going to take this graph and I'm going to put an x value right here. Suppose an x value of 2. Now, I want to make a statement very quickly. The limit of this function as x approaches 2 is fine. Maybe this is a height of 5. You know that the limit of this function as x is approaching 2 is 5. That's fine. That's fine. But what we do know now is that the first derivative at an x value of 2 does not exist. So the limit and the derivative are not necessarily the same thing. Here's where it clarifies this mess to try to clean this up. The limit as x approaches 2, come on function, Take that back. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h at an x value of 2, this does not exist. Y'all see the difference? The limit of the difference quotient, which is the value of the first derivative, does not exist. The limit of just the function itself does. Okay, that's the big difference here. So the limit, this is called the difference quotient. The limit of the difference quotient is the same thing as the first derivative, and they don't exist. But just the limit of the function at that point does. This is talking about the slope of the tangent line. This is just talking about the value of the function. So keep those two straight. Don't confuse these two limits. Keep them um, independent in your mind. <clears throat> All right. Maybe that kind of clarifies what I, the point I'm trying to get across here. All right. So that's the end of Section 3.2. <clears throat> Let me close this recording. And we'll go have some fun <clears throat> in Section 3.3. <clears throat>